Hmm. What's the difference between a technical control like Active Directory and a stoplight? Take a moment to think about that. Well, without laws and without enforced policies, both of them would just be considerations and recommendations. So I want you to think a little bit that the stoplight and what its function really is to tell us when we can go and when we should stop. It's there. It's a technical control. It's a technology that prevents us from getting hurt, right? It, it protects us in many ways. However, do you believe that without laws to enforce violations of the rules, uh, we would take stoplights just as serious? Comment your answer uh, below. Um, but I could say that I probably wouldn't. I would look up at that red light and I would say, that's a, that's a pretty light. <laughs> and just keep on going. Um, right? So in some states, you know that when we, when we would run, a, if you were to run a red light, a camera will take a picture of your license plate and send you a bill in the mail. So um, the only reason that that's possible is because there are laws to back that up. Many of you may have gotten uh, a ticket before for either running a light or speeding, perhaps. It has happened to many of us. But you know that the laws of the road and the laws of you know that apply to the stoplight are taken serious because they're actually enforced. So what I want you to know about it with group policy, which is the subject of the the day today or of, of this lesson, that group policy needs some company policy, like company law on the back end, to protect it. So if anyone ever violates a policy that you enforce or comes up with a workaround, repercussions can, can be taken in order to uh, discourage that type of behavior in the future or that type of misuse. So group policy is a Microsoft product, and I'll talk to you about that. It's typically implemented with Active Directory in an on-premises situation where computers are in the same network environment as the domain controller, or at least can reach it. Um, and you know we built a domain controller in the last video. So I will say, again, when it comes to watching this this video series and going through this course that this class is best enjoyed if you follow along, meaning you build the same lab systems I build and you take the same steps I take. However, you can also enjoy it and you can also learn by eating some chips on the couch or just having a soda or whatever you do when you hang out on the couch and you just want to enjoy and learn. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how we can set up group policy. We're going to go ahead and set up what's called a computer usage policy. And we're going to be using two VMs. So if you're doing this on a, a on-premises virtualized environment, you'll need two VMs, one client, one server. Uh, so before this point, you should actually have Active Directory installed with a whole entire OU structure, so I would recommend if you don't, you can go back and watch, but I'll also provide a brief um, explanation in this video too. So here's how I have it. I'm already remoted into both. I didn't want you all to have to watch me remotely connect. Um, I want to show you that what we're doing here, um, on the left is my domain controller, on the right is my client, and we're going to start on my left side, we're going to start on my domain controller. So we're going to go into Active Directory Users and Computers. I want you to get in this habit when you come into your lab environment or you start your workday. And I want you to take a look at your OU structure. Just know it. Remember, OUs are organizational units. Active Directory is that centralized database of objects that are part of our network. It's like the central nervous system for your network environment. And all the services connect through it normally. So you're going to see a OU structure. I broke mine down by site. So the Texas site has three different departments, engineering, IT, and R&D. Today, with R&D, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and apply group policy to that OU. And, and it's not done through Active Directory users and computers. It's actually done through the group policy editor, which we're going to go to. 
but I want to make sure you know that after you've joined a computer to the domain for the first time, it does put it in this OU. So you'll probably see an object in here that you will have to right click and move it to the other OU. So in this case, what I did prior to this video was I moved this computer object, this account that's been registered after I joined the domain in the last video, and I moved it from the staging area into the corresponding OU that I want it to be in. So I'm gonna show you how we do this. So you go ahead and open up search, go to group policy, you can start to type group, so it'll pop up. I'm gonna pin that, because that's a really powerful tool to have and to be able to wanna quickly access. So we're gonna notice that in group policy management, you will typically have a view like this, and you're gonna have to expand it out, expand out your domains. You notice you can have multiple domains. In this case, we only have one domain. Expand it out, expand out OUs again, then expand out the R&D OU, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply that computer usage policy to the to the R&D OU, and really we want it to impact computers, but we can apply it to the root level here. One thing to note, don't edit this default policy. That's already there, that's already got some pre-configured policies like a character limit on a password, I think the control, requiring control alt deletes in there as well. Just leave that default alone. Um, we'll create our own. So we'll go ahead and R&D, right click, create a GPO, a GPO, group policy object for this domain and link it here. That's exactly what we want to do. Well, guess what we're going to name it? Something logical. So we'll say computer usage message, hit OK. We're going to right click that. So I'll right click the, the policy and then I'm going to edit it, which means I can go into configuring it. Do you remember what I said in a past video? I mentioned that group. there's really two types of group policies. There's computer configuration and there's user configuration. One policy will impact the entire computer no matter who logs in. And that's a computer configuration policy. A user configuration policy impacts just that user based on their group or based on their credentials and their access, right? So really based on the group they're in. Uh, so they're, they're, we'll get to that one. But in this particular video, I want to show you a computer configuration policy, which is the logon message. All right, I'll admit, the hardest thing for me when it comes to group policy is finding where the policy I want actually is. I don't know if anybody out there can relate. If you've ever had any experience, comment below. But mine in particular is where exactly do they bury that policy? Because it goes a couple of directories deep. So typically what I do is just like any other thing in life, I turn to Google for the answer. And I Googled it and I looked up and I said, hmm, how can I make this service start in Windows? Or how can I make this change happen on a bunch of Windows computers using group policy? So the more specific you can get with your Google searches, the better. You can call that Google Foo. So I'm gonna go in policies, and I think I remember where this one is. Go to Windows settings, security settings, uh, local policies, security options, and it's gonna be an interactive logon message. So you'll notice there's two of them. This can be confusing. So, so one here, one here. You need to enable both of these. We need to fill in them both because I've noticed that if you don't do a title, uh, then there will not be any displayed message. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do both. So this is technically the body of the message, right? Check that and we'll say um, here, un authorized access is strictly prohibited. So we want to go ahead and use strict language opposed to um, soft welcoming language because this is something that's warming, warning people that if they misuse the computers that there could be bad, you know, bad precautions or they, they could get in trouble. Um, you could even get you know, into legalese with this and talk about potential legal action that could be taken if someone did something bad. Now, you may be thinking, oh, why not be more open? Why not be, allow them to be free? Yes, there are learning labs for that, but not every environment is a learning lab, like a hospital, for example, where patients, you know, some things that happen on the computers could actually determine life and death. 
um, where data, if accessed, could reveal somebody's personal health information. So that's not really a learning lab environment, so there should be some strict messaging in place that would discourage strongly someone from misusing the system, right? So we're going to go into the title. We're going to say, you know, let's, let's make some all bold. Say, please read, say, computer usage policy. So you, would, you could say, you know, your organization's name, computer usage policy. So Acme Inc., um, you know, Acme Inc., computer usage policy, right? And you want to make sure it's bold so that it catches people's attention as they log in. So hit apply and OK. Again, as I mentioned in the beginning about stoplights, without having uh, some company policy in place, to truly enforce this is if somebody did, you know, break the rule of misusing the computer, whatever that means to your organization or to the organizations you all are going to help, then um, I would say uh, you, this would not be followed, right? This would not be respected if you don't have some type of policy in place to, to kind of have some repercussions. Um, I'm not saying it's all about that. I know cultures are very important, but also having some boundaries is too. So, especially as it pertains to computers. So now that we have it set, that should be the steps we need to actually configure the policy. Now we have to make sure the policy gets to the computers or the computer. Because in this case, we only have one, but we may have, you know, 20, hundreds, thousands of computers to do this on. Uh, but it shouldn't be a manual process because group policy actually allows us to automate these types of security settings. Uh, by right clicking here and enforcing it. You could also click the OU and if there was a bunch of computers inside of R&D, it would actually try to force what's called a group policy update. So I'll force that update. We'll see it processing. I've noticed that it does throw an error message often, but I've still, in my experience, it has still succeeded. Um, so I've, I've got the, the group policy um, on the other end, just to show you in case you have to do this and you, you fig you're seeing that the policy is not being applied, you can go to command prompt on the client or you can do a PowerShell command to the client to do a GP update. So I would recommend you, you don't have to manually access it like through remote desktop if you're in an on-premises environment. You could use PowerShell, which is another story. We could do GP update forward slash force just one step at a time. Don't feel like you have to know PowerShell right now. If you do, feel free to add to our Discord channel. And again, if you're feeling lost in this series or you feel like you just need somebody to connect with and talk to, I'm in there. I'm very active. Uh, and there's also others in there that are ready to answer questions and ready to collaborate. So notice how I did GP Update Force. It pulled in that update of that group policy from the domain controller. So really the ultimate test to see whether or not this worked is to reboot this, which will what it'll do is it'll kick us out right now. Once it kicks us out, I'll reconnect to it. I'll give it a few seconds here, um, you know, maybe 10 seconds. It shouldn't take too long to boot. It's got a solid state drive um, and it's in the cloud on Amazon's infrastructure. So, you know, we're gonna see, we're probably not gonna see much latency in it coming back up. So I've got my domain controller up. There's nothing else I need to do in that for now. So I'll, I'll go ahead and just leave that there, maybe set it to the back, and then I will try to reconnect to the client. So I'll hit connect, RDP client. We've done this a few times, but practice makes perfect. Click on here. All right, hit connect. Yeah, give it some time. It still hasn't come back up. Um, the reason I know that is because it hasn't already prompted me to say yes to the certificate. Uh, when you're in security, especially when you're applying cybersecurity perspective to what you're doing, you want to consider what's happening in the background. So right now I'm able to connect, so let me go ahead and decrypt the password. I'm okay with you all having this if you want it. It doesn't uh, negatively affect me. I use this environment just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to paste in there, and when we connect, we should be able to see that usage message as soon as we connect in. So hit yes, and there's the message. So you see it right there. 
The please read computer usage policy, unauthorized access is strictly prohibited. Typically, this will be a much longer written out message, um, and we can help each other write policies if you would like to. I'm, not gonna pro I'm probably not going to do that on, on in the video series, but I will do that in Discord and provide you some templates if you want to go check that out. But just understanding this is what they're going to see. This is what they should see when we're talking about doing a log on or a computer usage policy is something that would catch their attention right away, hopefully signal them to read and, and see, hey, if I misuse these computers, there could be some issues. Or even that that you could inform them that this network is actively monitored because, you know, there's solutions out there like Meraki, uh, Ubiquity, and just about any modern network solution, Active Directory, that really allows you to monitor activity which some people may see as an invasion invasion of privacy but the truth of the matter is when it's an organization owned network uh, you should pay attention to what's happening on it because you don't want people doing illegal things on your environment so that's why this is important that's why having some type of structure in place and monitoring in place is a good thing and now we have the foundation for that so i hope this video has been in uh informative for you. I hope you've learned a lot. Uh, I hope you're having fun with this class so far. I encourage you to jump in that Discord um, and, and just chat it up with us. Uh, share what you're working on. We'll help with, with any stage you're at in this um, and help with your career as well. Uh, I would like you to know before we go that in the next video, I will be building on top of this. I will be creating a file share We'll be working on looking at how um, file sharing works in this networked environment we're in, in a Windows environment, and how we can build security mechanisms around that using group policy and in, in users and groups. So we'll see you there. Uh, until next time, have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.